So I've gotten interested in the parallels between what we know about autism in its systemic and brain biology and what can be caused and what has been documented to be caused or contributed to by electromagnetic exposure by Wi-Fi and exposures related to that. Autism has become a very common and expensive and difficult and challenging condition in childhood, highly heterogeneous all over the world. And during the same period of time that we've seen increase in reported rates, we have seen a enormous increase in the pervasiveness of electromagnetic exposures. I personally think of, of the contribution of electromagnetic exposures as really important, although I always acknowledge that there are other contributors going on in parallel. What are the parallels between uh, autism and, and electromagnetic fields? The first slide. The where I think the parallels are most centrally important is in the relationship of the molecular and the metabolic brain and the electrophysiological electromagnetic brain because the chemical and molecular activity in the brain shapes very much how the brain will generate its brain waves. And the brain waves are the carriers of information and coordination of information. Next slide. So at the molecular and metabolic level, we've seen that uh, uh, Wi-Fi electromagnetic fields can damage DNA, can actually cause mutations in DNA. And in autism, we know that a certain subset of people with autism have mutations that their parents didn't have. Once these mutations are passed on, they can be carried on to subsequent generations. There's also damage to proteins, such as misfolding of proteins. There's damage to cell membranes, making them stiff and more brittle, so that the receptors and the channels that live in the membranes don't work so well and the cell becomes inefficient. There's harm to energy production in the mitochondria of the cells. Mitochondria are exquisitely vulnerable to electromagnetic field injury as well as to injury by many toxicants, even pharmaceuticals, many, many thousands of things, but, but electromagnetic exposure is one of them. And immune function is harmed. So we have documentation of problems in all of these domains in autism. And we have documentation that all of these domains can be harmed by electromagnetic fields. So minimally, I think the implication of that is that people with autism are likely to get worse with more electromagnetic field exposure. And it's possible that this may also contribute to causing autism. Third slide. Now the brain is dependent on all of these molecular and cellular functions in order to be the exquisitely calibrated, extraordinary information processing system that it is. Uh, and we have evidence that elect we have evidence in autism that there are many problems with how the brain functions. Poorer coordination, less richly organized information, uh, energy problems, antioxidant depletion, and all of these issues are also documented to be caused or contributed to by autism. Worsening of stress management worsening of sleep. Sleep is an enormous problem in autism and sleep is, is known to be interfered with by electromagnetic fields and Wi-Fi. Um, so what can we do? The biggest thing that we can do, and a lot of this is freely able to be done by everybody in their homes for absolutely no cost, is to reduce exposures. It's really important to reduce exposures in the sleeping area. Put all of your electronic devices on one strip, unplug it at night, and sleep without the interference of, of those exposures, and then plug it in in the morning. Very important for men not to carry their cell phones in their pockets because that's associated with reduced sperm count and mutations, including perhaps the de novo mutations that we're seeing in autism. 
and greatly limit exposures for children. Minimize, you know, maybe FaceTime with grandma, but not a lot of playing, not playing with all of these devices. Children need to play in 3D with other human beings and with living things. And finally, build resiliency. It's been shown that antioxidant depletion can contribute to vulnerability to damage from Wi-Fi. And, and on the other side, melatonin and a variety of other ant antioxidants have been shown in a number of studies to provide protection. So eat a healthy, multicolored, antioxidant-rich diet. And overall, reduce total load of stress because electromagnetic fields and Wi-Fi are not the only stress in our lives, but they make everything else worse. So keep the load down. So I think it's really important for us to go ahead and do serious research on this, but it's going to take a while. And meanwhile, there are a lot of common sense things that we can do to reduce risk, even if that risk is not absolutely fully established. There's a lot of strong evidence suggesting that as the science pours in, it will be there. So we may as well be precautionary now. Thank you.